Hi there, this is a video accompanying the Gymna tutorial series Developing an MVC Component and this time we're looking at adding ACL. Now I'm going to split this step into three videos and in the first video we're going to look at some of the infrastructure stuff around um, ACL. Um, the second one we're going to look at the tutorial code and then the third one we're going to look at the viewing side of things. Now, if you're not very familiar with ACL, I would strongly recommend you have a look at this video here and go through this tutorial. And I've put both of those links on the uh, this web page here, this tutorial um, and the video as well. Um, both are really very good. Um, the other thing that struck me recently was that I've been using uh, these slides to talk through the components and it struck me I could share these via Google Docs. So I'll put the link again into the notes of this video, uh, but I've also put it at this start of this series developing um, a basic component step two there. And there's the link there so you're welcome to download the style the slides or do with them whatever you feel like so let's get back to the tutorial and as i say in this first video i'm going to look at some of the infrastructure we have around acl now if we go to joomla development uh or sorry joomla administration and we look at the content stuff uh, we can see that we can put uh, permissions at various levels. So at the very most detailed level, I've got an article here. And if I edit it, then I can go and it will show me the permissions and permissions for all these various user groups here that I can set. If I close that then, and go to the categories here. I can similarly edit a category. Now I've got a, a category here of very special, which is a subcategory of special. And again, I can go to the permissions and set the permissions against the various user groups. And then up above that, I can go to the system global configuration and set permissions that are associated with com content in general along this tab. So there's a whole lot of these things here. And at the very top, if I go to global configuration, then I can set some permissions at that level as well. And here you can see them here. So there is this hierarchy of uh, things that you can set permissions against. And at the very bottom level, you've got an article. Up above that, you've got categories and you can set the one against the, the category of the article. And then it may be parented onto another category and so on of the category hierarchy. And you can set permissions at each level here. You can then set permissions at the component level and at the global site configuration. So you've got article, category, component, and then at the very top level. And these permissions are all held in the assets table. So if we look at the assets table, we see we've got an ID there. There's the permissions over here that we'll come and look at in a wee minute. But what I want you to notice is this parent ID here. So if I go down to the bottom here, this is the uh, one I was editing, article in a very special category. It's article 7. It's got an ID, an asset record ID of 125 and a parent ID 96. So if I go up to 96 here, it's content category 9 which is very special which is the category that I had that uh, set against that article 
Again, it's got a parent 60. And if we go up to there, com content category eight special, which was the parent uh, category. And then if I look at the parent ID there, it's eight. And if we go up to eight, this is the asset record for com content in general. And you see all the permissions over here. And then one is its parent, and I've go up to one. And this is the, the top level. So this represents the, the global configuration stuff here at the very top level. So the key thing to, to take out of that is you can set category, you can set permissions at each of these levels. And each of these levels corresponds to one of these records in this asset record table. And it's got a parent which takes you up through this hierarchy here. Over here, we've got the permissions themselves. They're called by Joomla rules. And you can see various things like for here, if I just zoom in a bit, you can see core admin, core create, core edit. So how does Joomla know what the actions, as it were, are? Well, the actions are defined in this file access.xml. If we go down here, we can see the one in the tutorial. So these are the sets of actions that can be, that you can have permission set at the various levels, at the component level, category level, and message level. So let's just look at them for uh, com content. Now the com content one is going to be in our administration components com content. Area access to XML. So you can see again at the component level, these are the actions against which permissions can be set. So if we go to that global configuration and we hit articles, and it's the permissions tab, you can see all here the various sets of actions that can be set against um, com content. And if you compare that with that, you'll see the same set of actions. And I've put a list of those here, what they mean. So the, the core ones have specific meanings. So for example, core admin edit component options and permissions. Um, that's basically here, the, all the options for this component, plus the permissions over here. Core options, uh, can, you can edit the component options, but not the permissions. So you just can't have the last tab. Core manage, you can access component slash hello world. Um, or in this case of content, it's really going on to content and articles and so on. You can create new items, articles, or in our case, it will be hello world messages, delete, edit, edit state, changing the state, the published state, or edit own. Now we can't do that in hello world because we're not actually recording the, um, the identity of the user who created each message. But these are the ones that are set in um, com content. And if you look at the other uh, sets of permissions, sets of actions here and here, and compare those with what you get whenever you do um, editing an individual article or a category, you'll see that they match up. So this is editing a, an individual article. And if we go across to the permissions when it comes up, we'll see delete, edit, and edit state. And if we compare that with here, we get delete, edit, and edit state. And you'll find the same for category if you want to go through that. Okay, so that's um, the 
uh, actions. The next thing to look at is the user groups, because whenever we're editing uh, the permissions and setting the permissions, this is the list of user groups that are on the system. Um, now, this is pretty much the default list of user groups. I've just added another one there called special admin. So if we close that, we can go to users. Uh, manage. And here we've got a list of the users on the system and the user groups that they're identified with. We can go to user groups. And these are all the user groups. And you'll notice again, they're in this sort of like a tree sort of structure. So these um, are in a hierarchy, like the assets. So special admin is kind of like a child of the administrator, which is a child of the manager. And what we do in the permissions is we set, go back to, Content articles. So for each of these actions at each level in the asset hierarchy, we set against each of the user groups on the system, one of these three value, values inherited or allowed or denied. And if we go to our assets table and look at, for example, look at com content and look at this bit more detail here. I'll zoom in over there. You can see there the actions core.admin, core.manage create and what we're doing is we're setting against seven is going to be a user group 10 is going to be a user group and we're setting against those we're setting one or zero or in some cases it's just not there which means it's the default which is inherited so zero means denied and one means that it's allowed And if I go down to this picture here, here is an example of permissions being set. We've got our asset hierarchy here. At the bottom, there's an individual article. Then there's a couple of categories. One is a parent of the other. Then it goes up to article manager and global configuration. Over here, we've got a user group, assistant history teachers, which is a child of history teachers, which is a child of teachers. And what we have here is we have, for example, here in this position here, we've allowed history teachers to access the history assignments category. And because one side history assignment articles belong to that category, all history teachers will also have access to the assignment articles there. So down here, we inherit from here. So we've got a green um, inherited allowed. Similarly, assistant teachers, because they're um, a child of history teachers, over here, they will also have access to that category. And as well down here, assistant history teachers will have access to um, articles because their parent um, asset, as it were, and their parent user group has got access here. So it's not just a matter of looking up through the assets and through the user groups. You kind of have to go up and across as well to check for access. And this is really quite a good way of viewing it because if you've got something here which is allow, it spreads the green 
to the right and to the down. Similarly, if you've got something which is denied, it will spread to the right and down as well. The other thing that we have to take into account is um, the fact that users are allocated to user groups. So if we go back to users, and we'll have a look at one of the users. I've created a number of users on the system, for example, this administrator. And I've set this administrator against a couple of user groups. So this is the administrator user group, which is different from the administrator user. And I've set this administrator user against that administrator group and the registered group as well. But notice that because the administrator group is a, you know, a, a subgroup of manager, this user here, administrator, will also kind of be um, inherit stuff from that manager as well. So if we go back to the picture, whoops, where was it? here in our tutorial. It's not quite as simple as this 2D picture that we have here because users can belong to a number of different user groups. So for example, we've talked about history teachers and, and uh, that here, but there could also be another group hierarchy which is associated with say out of school activities um, you know, you have various clubs after school and individuals could belong to different out of school activities and there could be another hierarchy associated with that. So whenever you want to check for access to a particular asset at a particular level, it's kind of like this, but you will also have parallel, um, parallel planes like this or parallel 2D representations for the other user groups that that uh, user might belong to. So really it's a, it's a very quite a complex picture and does take a bit of getting your head round um, but also it is very flexible and really very powerful. There's, there's pretty much nothing that you can't do with this structure here. So that's how things are held internally. How do we get at these things then programmatically? And the key class that we need to consider is this JAccess. So JAccess, the class that handles all access authorization routines. So let's look at a couple of the functions here. We've got get actions, which is actually deprecated to get actions from file. So this one here returns a list of actions from a file for which permissions can be set. Remember actions are the things like core admin or core.create, those sorts of things. So basically what it's saying is if you give it the path to the XML file, i.e. the access.xml file, and an X path to search for the fields, and here the default is slash access slash section name equals component. So if we go back to our access file slash, this is our access.xml file, and it's slash access slash section where name equals component. So it's basically this section here. And what this function will do is it will return the list of actions that are available, as you can see there. So it will basically return the, a list of these actions here. So that's one function. The next function would get groups by user. Method to return a list of user groups mapped to a user. So you basically give it the user ID that you're interested in and it will return 
all of the user groups and there's an option there as to whether it is just the explicit user groups that it's mapped against or whether it includes those that are kind of parents of that user groups that it's in, i.e. this recursive um, parameter there. So that's that. The third one was check. So I've got to check. So method to check if a user is authorized to perform an action optionally on an asset. So what you're giving it is the user for which to check authorization, that's the user ID, the action, whether it's core.create or core.delete or whatever, the asset key, so that's the level in the asset hierarchy and it's saying it can be the asset ID or the asset name. So if we go back to our assets table here, this is the ID. But more and often than not, we will use the name. So at the top level, it's become content. Or it's going to be something like at our bottom level, it was com content article 7. Or com content category 9 something like that so if you give it something like that and the user id it is going to come back with true or false depending on whether that user can actually do that action on that asset so that's check uh, some related functions are in juser so let's have a look at that. And in particular, this authorize action. So this is to check. Um, basically, a user, uh, can he do a certain action against an asset? So this is a method on a JUser object. So the JUser object will identify the user in question. And then when we run authorize method against that, and we pass in the action and we pass in the asset ID as before, we'll get either true or false. And if we have a look through that code, that code is going to be in libraries Joomla user. So let's go and have a look at that. Libraries Joomla user. Here it is here. So here's our J user class. And if we look for authorize and have a look and see what it's doing. Well, it's basically checking, uh, you know, for core admin. And it's doing a lot of check of see if this is like super user. Um, but basically it comes down to if it's root, then you pass it true. It's kind of like saying if it's super user, you can do anything. But if not, then call this function jaccess check. And that was the one that we've just looked at. And it passes in user ID the action and the asset name. So you can see in the asset table that these are called rules. And these are really kind of like JSON strings and they're representations of uh, the objects which Joomla internally uses to hold the permissions and they're actually held in this class here so j access rules so this is the um, class and objects within that class represent the kind of sets of permissions that you get here and each of those is a JAccess rule. So this will be for an individual user class 
um, and an action that will be either set to true or false, uh, true in the sense of allowed, false in the sense of denied or not set, which means it's inherited. So those are the kind of low level classes that kind of don't really figure much in our high level code. And the final thing I wanted to look at was this J helper content get actions, um, which is actually used in our tutorial code. So we'll have a look at it. It's library CMS helper. Now, although this is specific to uh, com content, all the other components um, which can set permissions at various levels seem to use this as well. So if we go down to get actions and have a look at this, what this uh, does. So it takes three parameters. It takes the component and it takes the section and it takes the ID. And that is really getting towards the definition of the asset. So a general case, it will be something like com content article seven. But if you don't want to have it at that level, you can get it at the higher level, you know, just of eight com content. So it's setting the asset name to be the component, which in our case become hello world. And if you've actually passed the section and the ID in, it will add on to that asset name, the section and the ID. So that will be, as I was saying, giving the, the more detailed ones, the asset level down the hierarchy. If you don't pass in the section and the ID, it will take the high level uh, component. Um, setting this to be result to be a new object, J object. Now, if you have a wee look through J object, you find it's deprecated and in place these days, you should use this new standard class. I'll, I'll put in a link to this page if you want to follow up on that. It's calling user equals J factory get user so it's getting the user identity of who is actually logged on it's then calling this function j access get actions from file so as we find before what this function is going to do it's it's going to get the set of actions which are specified in the access.xml file and it's looking for that section there so it's going to return basically these actions here, which are set against the component. Then for each of those actions, it's going to set this name in this object here, and it's going to set it to, and it's going to look at user authorize action name asset. So what it's going to do is it's going to call this authorize function that we looked at um, a couple of moments ago, and it's going to pass one of these actions in, in turn, and it's going to pass the asset name that it's got from up here, which is either going to be the component or the more detailed one with category or whatever. And this is going to return true or false depending upon whether the user can has that action on that asset name. And it's going to do that for all of these actions. So what we're going to end up with as a result is going to be an object which has got all these properties set, um, one per action. And for each of those actions, it's going to tell us, can this user do this action. And this is exactly what we need for our tutorial, as we'll find out in the next video. Thanks very much for watching.